Okay, here's where I am today. A week later, on Dory Maintenance. I don't have enough greatly expired epoxy to uh, recoat the bottom on the inside. I have some ordered from Total Boat that will uh, be here in a week. Maybe a, a little less than a week. Meanwhile, I discovered I have a pickle jar half full of oil-based Minwax bar urethane. I sanded down the gunnels. I was going to sand down all the bright wood. And uh, how much time do I want to spend working on a boat compared to how much time I want to spend out in the boat? I'm not going to make such a huge project out of this. I'm going to put the oil-based spar urethane over the wood I've sanded. Uh, any other bright wood that looks like it can use it. I'm not going to sand everything down first. I'm not building a cabinet. I'm just making my boat seaworthy and get another 10 or 20 years out of it. Now this hole here, this is where I had a uh, non-stainless ring bolt that held down the bow sprit and the foredeck. I'm not going to put this back on. I got a better idea, I think. So I'm going to rasp off this lump. Fill this with 5-minute e epoxy. Put in this plug. Sand it off. And be done with that hole. I could have made this a lot bigger, couldn't I? Maybe I will. So that's what I'm going to do. It's a hot day, no wind. Get a rag and wipe some of this down. Get the dust off. And then, have at it. Good enough is good enough. I'm going to try and try to get a bigger stick. One more suited to the size of that hole. Yep, there it is. Okay, same amount, as much as possible. That looks about the same. And that is all there is to that. These cutouts here, one on each side, this is the rowing station. Uh, just a little more clearance to the oars to get down into the water, which is quite a ways down from here. Sandra missed these, so... Quite a shelf of skim on top of this after, I don't know, I think eight years. Some people paint is a little like watching wood turners sand. So I will turn off the camera until something interesting comes along. Well, I said I'd bring it back when I came to something interesting. What's interesting is, I just happened to read the full label. My Minwax Oil Spar Urethane Interior! Exclamation point! 
what in the hell am I doing with interior anything? The only thing I can think of is maybe I bought this for a furniture project. Oil-based interior, water-based exterior. Go figure. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish what I'm doing since I'm halfway around. I don't have any exterior at the moment, but I will buy a gallon and put two more coats on this at least. But for now, I'll just keep going. Looks pretty anyway. It's not going to rain in the next, you know, for the rest of August. So I don't have to worry about that aspect of it for now. Having said that, if the weather gods were listening, we'll get a downpour tonight. Interesting thing about Minwax urethane, it used to be to buy interior or exterior, oil based or water based. Now, I don't know if they've changed the formula or changed the label, but they're labeled interior, exterior, you still choose oil or water base. I'm going to put at least two coats on top of this interior just in case. Maybe three. Maybe four. Go ahead. Got to get this lightly sanded so that it will give some some truth as we say in the art world for the uh, next coat to hold on to. Now this is a brand new can of Indoor Outdoor Helmsman Spar Urethane. No idea what the difference is between this and the old stuff. Amazes me we haven't progressed any farther than we have in paint can technology. First thing we do is get a hammer, drive a few holes around the rim of the can. Let the drips back in. Now we're ready to get to work. One of those holes I put in there is outside where the can lid goes. So I will need to plug that up. Like that. What I've done is scuffed yesterday's coating of urethane with sandpaper and vacuum the interior probably half a bushel of leaves and now I'm going to do all of the interior that's not going to get epoxy except the floorboards which will get boiled linseed oil so got to remember I got to get out of here Probably ought to save this seat for last. Save that whole area for last. I'll start here and go clockwise. Which means I'll probably put the camera in the wrong place for good video. But I must confess I'm more concerned with getting this done and getting good video. 
Hard part's remembering what's wet. I don't keep putting my hands on it. This is going to go on for a while. I worked all the way around, all wood, not painted yellow, except for the bottom plywood. Is now had at least one coat of urethane. I decided that I would put urethane on the floorboards after all. Some of these C planks are loose. Construction glue holding these down for two or three small spots. It's not sufficient in the long run. You need fasteners too. Now I'm going to do all these floor panels. Okay, it's been a long afternoon, almost cocktail hour, but I got a lot done. Interior of the boat is finished as far as urethane is concerned. So I've got, done all the floor sections, and although people really think this floor looks nice, and so do I, it is a pain in the ass when it comes time to recondition it. Never rains in uh, coastal Oregon in August, except when it does, which was thunderstorms last night. And now, uh, instead of sanding and epoxying today, I'll be mopping up water and uh, letting it dry before I sand it. This shows the disadvantage of a flat bottom boat, if you put weep holes only along the keelson, shift is a little, listing a little bit to port, so the water piles up behind each frame instead of flowing down to the bottom location as it does on the starboard side. So what I do now is I get the sponge and sponge it out. This side is easy. I have only these two to empty. The other side, every single frame has to be empty. It's a warm, sunny day, so this should dry fast. May even be able to sand it today. Okay, that's those two. This one's not critical because I'm not gonna, probably I'm not gonna epoxy this one.
another thing I would do differently building this again. These. I would chamfer those so they slope inward so they don't collect water. Anything like the transom framing. Although if I were doing it again, I would not be any transom framing. It would be two three-quarter inch marine ply plywoods sandwiched. And that would be all there is to that. Probably not going to epoxy here. But get the water out anyway. Good sponge. Now I'll wait for sun and fresh air to do their thing. From level are we in this plane? I can see this one better. Oh, only about half a bubble out. I don't want two things in motion at once. So what I'm going to do... Is block these up here, but the other one a little higher. Okay, that's about a little more to fingers width. One more pump. There. Okay, there's no space there. And how much here? More than half an inch, looks like five eighths. I think that's too much. No improvement there. Now it's the same as the other side. I'm going to do that, then go jack up the other end, however much is necessary. Now, 
now. Need to get this up a little bit. That's got that bubble even closer. Well, let's see what it looks like back here. I'll accept that. That's close enough. So now, it's dry enough to sand. Yep, still pretty stable. Um, I can get in here and sand that. Eighty grit, <laughs> thirty-six. Don't think I'll be using the thirty-six. 